Hey, good morning. Question I have for you this morning. It's a hard one. It's a hard one. You ready? How do I avoid cheating? How do you avoid cheating? Now, I know what you're thinking. Our first place we go when we hear the word cheating is on relationships, and that's a huge deal. That's also the first place that Google goes on when you ask them how to avoid cheating. Uh, but we cheat on a lot of different places. We cheat according to our physical weaknesses and the things that we think that we really want or need. It, it causes us to be tempted to cheat. Gosh, we, we cheat on diets. I know you're thinking about that this time of year, right? We cheat on sobriety. We cheat on business, taxes, telling the truth. We, we cheat by wanting to take the easy way out. And we always regret that. Sometimes we just get to the point where we just feel like we can't avoid it and we just go, oh, heck, and we throw in the towel and we spend the rest of our life never feeling like we do the right thing. But you don't have to be that way. Hey, my name's Royal. I do these talks three to five times a week. I'm in the middle of an Advent series. Advent is the 24 days leading up to Christmas. And I'm using Luke uh, which has 24 chapters, the Gospel of Luke. And today I'm talking about when Jesus was, when Jesus was tempted. When Jesus was tempted. You're saying, well, Jesus was tempted? Isn't it, a t uh, isn't it a sin to be tempted? No, it's a sin to go with the temptation. The temptation is a test. It's a test to see whether we're going to stay strong or we're going to get weak. And, and what we've got to learn to do is we've got to learn to run from the physical weaknesses and we've got to run toward spiritual strength. And that's what Jesus does in Luke chapter 4. Jesus is 30 years old. He's a young guy. He's just started his public ministry. He just got baptized in chapter 3. And then it says, Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan River. He was led by the Spirit into the wilderness where he was tempted by the devil for 40 days. So Jesus was actually led by the Spirit to be tested, to be tested. This is going to prepare him for all the stuff that's going to be thrown at him in the next three years as he goes through his ministry. We're, we're tempted by, uh, when we're tempted, those are our tests. Those are our tests that make us stronger. It said that um, Jesus ate during this time nothing, and he became very hungry. So when he was weak, verse 3 says, Then the devil came to him and said, You are the Son of God. Tell this stone to become a loaf of bread. He's tempting him. He's tempting him to not do, he's tempting them to not pass the test. The test is for him to go to God. How do I know? Because here's the next sentence verse 4 Jesus told him no the scriptures say people don't live by bread alone so we've got to learn to run away from physical weaknesses and run towards spiritual strength here's how we do that you ready number one focus on loving Jesus make that your focus if you're not a Christian um, this part probably doesn't make any sense to you at all. I would really pray and think about that. If you want to know more about that, message me or go to a pastor or, or Google how do I come to know Jesus online, whatever you need to do that. But, but our willpower can only go so far. It's a battle, Scripture says, but not between flesh and blood, but be between spirit. It's between good and evil spirit. Uh, focus on loving Jesus, and if you do, He'll give you the spiritual power to avoid things that come from physical weakness. So don't forget we've got to run from the physical and run to the spiritual. Uh, just an example, I, I, I am a terrible dieter. I've never been able to diet in my life. But every year I fast for, for, for 30 days. I don't eat any solid food. How do you do that? What do you mean you can't diet? Well, I focus on God the whole time. I focus on God the whole time. And, and, and it's just, it's amazing. When you're being tempted and you focus on God, it actually makes you stronger and you feel the presence of God more. Number two, be with people who'll support you spiritually and not tempt you physically. Hey, if you have trouble drinking, don't go out with your drinking buddies. Don't go over to somebody's house who's going to offer you a drink. As a matter of fact, if they're a friend of yours, you tell them ahead of time, hey, I, um, would you mind not tempting me with drink tonight? I know that may sound corny, but, but you know how it is. How many times do we go, uh-oh, uh-oh? Be with people who will support you spiritually and not tempt you physically. Hey, be a part of church. Be involved in your church. Don't just go to church every once in a while. Get involved with people in a Sunday school class or in a life group or whatever, and then find someone who's stronger than you spiritually and 
ask them to help you. Ask them to help you get stronger. And then number three, be in the scriptures daily. Look, even if you get up in the morning, you spend 10 minutes. 10 minutes. And the best way to do that, I think, is just to stay in the Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Do that for a while. Get up in the morning. Like right now, I'm reading through, we're leading through Luke. Reading through Luke, a chapter a day for the next 24 days. And, and you can do that. Spend 10 minutes. Start your day with God in the Scriptures. And then number four, practice God's presence. Practice God's presence. How do you do that? You think about Him being there. You know, when my dad died, I had this weird feeling that he was watching me all the time. And, and it made, it really made me straighten up a few things because, oh, my dad's watching me. But, but that's what God's watching you. It's, he's already there, so you just practice his presence. Hey, my name is Royal. Uh, I'm pastor of Life Connection Church. If you don't have a church home, would you be my guest at Life Connection Church on Sundays at 9.15 or 11 o'clock if you live in our area, North Euless? And... Um, just come in. You'll enjoy it. You'll be welcome. Uh, come up and meet me. You know who I am. Uh, and then if it's if you've got a church or you're watching this somewhere else in the world, uh, watch this. Because here's my commitment to you. You're going to learn something, either through this or through what I teach on Sundays, that can change your life today. Every time. That's my goal. Every single time. Hey, let me just pray for you and me. Father God, I just pray today that we can avoid that we can avoid temptations, that we can avoid cheating by focusing on you. Lord, may we practice your presence all day long. I thank you for that, and I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So God bless. I'll see you next time. The good Lord will and the creek don't rise.